Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Bursell, aka Ever Tuning Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD, and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. I want to thank the NVLD project for the care package that they sent to me. If you want to see pictures of what is in the care package, go to Living with NLD. On Facebook or Instagram, I put pictures on there, and it is, they sent me two uh, t-shirts and four pens and a notepad and a thank you card, and they did this because they wanted to thank me for all the hard work that I'm doing on these podcasts, and also for being an advocate for NBLD and for being an important part of their community. And I wanted to thank them for sending me the care package. And thank you for the people who donated so far to my fundraiser for the NVLD project. That was another reason that they sent me the care package. The amount that we are at is 365 now. And the goal is a thousand and I believe we will get there by the end of April. The whole month of April is mental health awareness. I started the fundraiser early because I thought that might help jumpstart the goal and also just help people start thinking about mental health awareness. And I think that's a very important thing to think about, even if you don't have a learning disability or learning challenge, as I like to call it. And that, you know, it's probably on your mind more often than it is if you have it or if you know somebody who has one. So thank you for the people who who have donated to the fundraiser. And I believe we will reach the goal. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the episode today. I want to let you know that the next small Zoom group for people with NLD and for their parents is on April 27th, and it will be at 10 a.m. Pacific time zone, and it will go till 1130 so that people who are on the Pacific time zone can have time to grab lunch and Also, the NVLD project is helping me spread word about this. So if you know them, you can email them for the link or you can email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com for the Zoom link. Thank you. Bye. So today we are going to talk about what is normal for NLDers or people who have NLD, if you're not familiar with that term. That is what that means. So... We have one, two, four articles today. And the first one is titled, It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. And it's by Aline. And it's from the NVLD Project. Aline is, quote, always thinking of the world, uh, sorry, always thinks the world of Patty Bell Joanne and Jim Adams, and they are truly the best of the best, 
end quote. And this is another quote from that article by Aline. Quote, the first adult I will never forget is my secondary speech therapist, Patty Bell. She always had such confidence in me. Thanks to this and her incredible teaching style, I was able to learn the proper communication skills to navigate life, even though the odds were against me learning them. Yes, while we did encounter challenges as I was learning how to have a quote-unquote normal conversation, understand the importance of eye contact, practicing sounds, and use the proper tone of voice, we did make a tremendous amount of progress in these areas. Her rich empathy and high level of care allowed her this to happen. Since my schooling, I have kept in touch with her and I am proud to say her level of support hasn't wavered, end quote. I can relate to this quote from Aline's article because it has taken a village to raise me and helped me get to where I am today. I even had a speech therapist growing up who was very nice and helped me for a couple of years. She helped me learn the difference between hard and soft vowels. I wonder if I had her longer and for what Eileen had hers for, if that would have improved my social skills. I'm sure it would have, but I'm not exactly sure how or in what ways because it's a little hard for me to imagine that. But I have had many people help me with school. I've had about 25 tutors, if I combined all the ones that helped me in middle school, high school, and college, but I'm not including all the professors, teachers, and teachers in college that helped me in office hours. If I did, it might be about 40 or 50. That includes my parents, brother, and dog in there too. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that was funny. That included my dog. Um, but she did help. She's my emotional board animal. I want to thank all of these people because I wouldn't be where I am today without their help. It would have taken a lot more time to graduate from college to get in, and to get there without assistance. Here's another article titled Awkward from the NBLD Project by Nicholas who says, quote, quarantine life is actually pretty normal for me because my job is essential and I still have to go to work. The internet does make things less boring though, end quote. So this is the quote from Nicholas's article. Hey, hi, how are you? Oh, you weren't talking to me. There's someone else right behind me. Awkward. I guess I should pay more attention to my surroundings. It's been a while since I've seen you, so I can understand if you've forgotten who I am, although I probably won't realize it until later, end quote. I can relate to Nicholas because I have been in many awkward situations before. Some I have put myself in, like once I thought I saw my brother walking down a street in Berkeley and started yelling, Jonathan! <laughs> but then realized I was wrong when the guy didn't turn around. Oops. Similar situation, I was at my mom's church one Sunday and saw a woman I thought I knew and yelled, Jean! But then I realized I didn't know her. Uh-oh. In both of those situations, I felt very awkward and made a fool of myself and embarrassed myself. I've gotten better at not doing this by trying to recognize people by their face and name so I don't do the same thing again. Although with COVID and masks, sometimes that doesn't help because it can, it can cover up to half of the face. But if I know the person and have seen them regularly, then it usually doesn't matter or makes that much of a difference. And if they happen to use a mask over and over, 
then I know it's them, which helps. If you want a list of symptoms that most people with NLD experience, go to page four of this article, Nonverbal Learning Disorders, NLD. It's the last link for the articles that I'll post in the description. And I'm not going to quote all those symptoms because there's a lot of them. But here's another article from the NVLD project that I can definitely relate to. It's titled Life with NVLD as told by those around me by Stephanie, who is a technology strategist and symptoms developer for a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. She has struggled for years to deal with her brokenness, spending most of her adult life running from herself, living in codependent relationship, struggling to keep any minimum wage job, and trying desperately to find a place where she fits in. Her diagnosis was a eureka a mo moment uh, that saved her life. She struggles every day to give herself acceptance and compassion, but she has never felt more successful or accomplished, end quote. Another quote from her article, I was not diagnosed with NVLD until my mid thirties. My tragedies and mistakes are many and I couldn't pick one to share with you today. Rather, I will share with you snapshots of my experiences as said to peep, said to me, and about me throughout my life. Words from them slash you. Your handwriting is bad because you are lazy. If you just focus, you can write better. Why does she hang out with adults all the time? Why can't she get along with her peers? Why can't she make friends? What is wrong with you? Why can't you be normal? What made you think Sorry, what made you think I meant that? Why are you so mean after making a non-judgmental observation? How did you n not know that? You don't seem disabled to me. You're so smart. I'm socially awkward too. That doesn't make you special. You're just an introvert, end quote. So I can relate to these thoughts and questions because I've often wondered if other people have thought that about me sometimes when I tell them I have an LD. I'm used to not being normal because my mind and brain are not wired to be normal, but I try to have a somewhat normal life. But I'm starting to realize as I write the script and as I read it to you that there really is not such a thing as a normal life, even for neurotypicals. We all have our own version of quote unquote normalcy. And that's a good thing because that works for us. It really does take a village to raise a child, teen or adult with an LD because they really don't grow out of it. Unfortunately, you can make life easier by working cons constantly and consistently on the challenges that NLD presents and that you encounter to make your life easier, but they don't go away. Even with doing that, your life will still be hard because my life is still hard because I'm still working on mental math and trying to get better at driving, for example. And I'm still trying to work on being independent. <laughs> I am getting a lot better at math now than I was, but I'm still working on getting better at driving and will be for a while, probably years, but I ain't giving up. I don't give up easily. And I don't also give up easily on being independent, even though 
I get discouraged sometimes when I'm driving and I've had a bad day with practicing driving with my mom. And sometimes that's difficult for me to recover from. But lately I've been getting a lot better at driving. So that has made the independency feel easier for me. So I know some of the symptoms that are normal for people with NLD are visual spatial challenges, challenges with subjects like math and writing and challenges with multitasking and challenges with driving because of the visual spatial piece and multitasking and challenges with um, social cues and reading body language and facial expression and noticing the subtlety differences and tone of voice and that also some of the challenges are um, trying to plan a hand and trying to keep the big picture in their mind because sometimes they get so deep with their tunnel vision on the granular details. At least I know that happens to me. Um, and I know also some of the challenges are that they want to make friends and they try so desperately hard to make friends and that may not be seen to the outside world all the time, but they really do want to have friends. And I know for me, I don't have that many friends, but the ones that I do are really meaningful. And I'm glad that that is true for me because I rather have a few friends and have them be really meaningful than have a lot of friends and have them not be meaningful. Um, yeah, I would not like to be the popular person. I would like to be the person who has friends and has meaningful relationships in life. So whether you have challenges with knowing what's normal for people with NLD because you have NLD or you know someone who has it, I hope that this episode helped you understand a little bit more about that today and what we struggle with daily. And as I wrap up, I would like to hear from my audience about your normalcy in life with NLD. That was normalcy in quotes. Or NTs, please comment on this on livingwithnld.com or you can email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. And I hope you enjoyed learning some new things today. And as always, if you know somebody who has an LD, please let me know if they would like to be on this podcast. I do interview people for this podcast who have an LD. And if they have an LD and another learning challenge, I do interview them for the podcast also. Because I like to broaden it out to other learning challenges, not just an LD. And I... Hope you learned something new today, and I will talk to you next Friday. Bye. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.